The time following my last Plus R video has been rough. First, there was a week and a half period where I kinda hated playing the game. This was the result of a lot of things in life going sideways around the time of the second upload, and me already putting pressure on myself to get a beat em on script written finally. I'm writing this script on the day I finally finished editing the beat em on video, which is offering me the same relief I felt when I put out the second Plus R video weeks ago. But from there, I struggled to get my head on straight. I played Plus R as a coping mechanism, but the experience was poisoned as I tried to implement some changes to my game plan at the same time. This created compounding frustration. I was already out of sorts before I came to the game, so I'm already not playing at full focus, and now I'm altering how I play, which further disoriented me. It was a very negative mix that I think I would have caught after the first day or two and done something about had I been actively writing about the experience. Instead, I let it drag on for longer due to my ongoing struggle to act on my understanding that the way I handle problems is to first write about them. I've been battling this for four, five years since I really internalized that facet of myself. When your head's in a constant state of dysregulation, it's a domino effect. Putting off things that you think take a lot of mental energy at a time when you already feel like you have none. Instead, resorting to things that let you ignore yourself either through chasing a temporary sense of accomplishment, or chasing a temporary numb. I again really considered not including any of this personal stuff. I know it's about as surface level and vague as it gets, but there's already so much stigma and shaming that surrounds any talk of struggle that it makes it a risk that sorta has to be weighted. Do I speak honestly about things and potentially have someone come in to kick me when I'm down? Or do I just keep my mouth shut about it? This is real life. This series is about my experience with this game, and real life affects it, so those effects deserve to be mentioned. My experience with Plus R is not some separate entity isolated entirely from the rest of my life. Who knows, maybe someone else out there is dealing with shit and might feel less alone in whatever they're going through by hearing a voice be open about struggling without glorifying it. It might not be much, but even a little bit goes a long way when someone's down in the dumps. I regret pushing myself to play through that negative headspace. I should have taken about a week off from the game to get real life really settled down. Going forward, I'll work to not care about this sort of thing. If I'm not feeling it one day, I won't play. That's how I treated it when I was enjoying the game. The solution is two-pronged. I know I need to write more, but I also need to give time to low-effort outlets that don't ask anything of me in the same way I feel fighting games do. I've still got shows I want to watch, books I want to read, and I really need to get back to Persona 4 eventually. The issue is that I keep defaulting back to a very small selection of things when life goes sour, and it's all stuff that requires more mental energy than I have to spare. Writing feels that way in the beginning, but it isn't once I get a few sentences down. In the end, I took two days off from Plus R and made a conscious effort to remind myself that I liked the games when things were good, that this wasn't the game's fault. My return session proved that in spades, it was so much fun. It started out with one match where, despite the loss, I had played better than normal and managed to land one of the combos I'd been working on for the first time against a real person. That was a huge confidence booster which was then followed by a pair of matches against either my favorite or second favorite character to play against, Slayer. Six tight rounds where I played extremely well, worked in some 5Ks that helped a bunch, and was less reliant on raw crouching heavy slashes. I recorded those two matches and saved them to my laptop to watch before future sessions as a reminder of what I can do when I'm playing really solid. Lastly, there was an Axel mirror. Nothing makes me feel like my manhood is on the line more than a mirror match, as dumb as that sounds. And I was getting castrated at the start of this. The first match was pretty decisive in their favor, as was the first round of the second match. Then I did something really fucking stupid. Axel's half circle back heavy slash is probably his worst move from what I've heard, so I'd always been cautious about using it. But with another stomping from this axle likely on the way, I punted. I went for the move at round start, it worked, and then I did it like five more times, each one working. 
This won me two rounds in a row. Then it kept working in the third match, which I also won. Winning off the back of his dorkiest, potentially worst move made me laugh at myself. It felt great. But beyond a good laugh, the axle mirror helped me in a functional way too. The person I was facing started doing corner combos that ended in a special attack I hadn't considered using in a combo. I saw myself looking for ways to convert into that special move in training mode and subsequent matches. So despite hating them, I also love mirror matches because they let me see different shades of my character. The next few days after that were ass whoopings. Facing character I hate after character I hate after character I hate. What annoyed me most was that when they weren't doing their combos, I felt like we were of similar skill. Not the gap that saw me lose multiple rounds in one session without landing a single hit. The answer I came to was that they knew their basic combos and I didn't. And they were able to play with that knowledge of, once I get in, I can do real damage. That's knowledge I objectively lacked. I tried looking at Dustloop's combo section, but that didn't really do much for me. I don't learn most effectively by reading over wikis. I'd been using it as my default because I didn't really know where else to go initially. What I did to fix this issue was by looking for more generalized content on Plus R. I'll be linking all the content I mention in the description. The first to help me was a series of videos that just went over the game's mechanics, separating them into beginner, intermediate, and advanced videos. Then I saw a two minute video from Sejam where he went over some basic things about neutral, using Soul as an example as he built a small two hit conversion into something substantial. He followed that by giving options for what to do if your opponent does X or Y or Z. I went into training mode, opened a text document, and tried to write down that same sort of thing with Axel, using his K to 3P as my starting link. If it hits, I do a combo that ends in a hard knockdown from Renson. If they block, go to a combo that ends in the special move I took a liking to during the Axel mirror. If they faultless, I go for Rasho. Rasho goes through faultless, but it can also be cancelled if they try to approach on the loadup. If they try to jump to avoid the K3P, I've got a combo off 2S that I'm getting more consistent with on the jump cancel. This is the thing I'd been missing. I'd been missing a foundational piece, a combo I can feel confident in, and a map of where to go when they react to it. It helps that 3P is a great Oki tool, something that one commenter on the last video suggested I work on. They were right, and I'm glad that these improvements get to come together in one. Something I've started making a point of doing regularly is watching Digital Watches matches. They're a top Axel player that I heard of when first looking up resources on learning the character in Plus R. I'd previously stayed away from trying to learn through watching top players. My reasoning was that, since they're playing at such a higher level than where I currently am, I'd be missing a lot of the how and why of what they did, and it would actually impede my progress if I attempted to emulate them too early. That's not been the case as I've been watching watches. I've been able to pick up not just attack routes and bits of tactic, but also confidence. Watching them, I see what's possible with the character. It makes me want to try out new things and explore the spaces they're taking, Axel. Something as little as watching them cancel Rasho something I've struggled with, has gotten me to try it out more, which has warranted solid results. I've also gotten a lot better at realizing when to go for Rasho. The only combo I could do consistently for the longest time was Crouching Kick, Sweep, Renson. Once people realized that's what's coming every time, they just used Faultless Defense. It took me a second to figure out that I should be going for Rasho instead of Renson after a bit since they're going to be grounded as Renson has an extension that hits people trying to jump over it. It was one of those aha moments for me. Another move I'm getting better at using is 2S. I almost never used it in the earliest stage of playing this game, but now with being more comfortable at catching jumpers with 5P and 6K, I felt it time to rope along the third main anti-air normal into my regular rotation. Having it as part of my 3P map has given me more confidence in the move, learning to jump cancel and at least tack on some extra damage with a jumping dust. 
The goal is to build up a combo that brings things back down to earth with an axle bomber. I've done it a few times in training mode, converting 2S into a jumping heavy slash, dust, bomber. It's much too inconsistent to try out in normal matches, and I still can't figure out what my ending sequence should be, but this is so much of what I love about fighting games. Figuring out combos is my bliss in this genre. To have it working as an active piece in the map of my main decent damage combo makes it even better. Off a couple of rough losses where I felt myself floundering, I was elated to face a testament. Like with Slayer, I love facing this character. They have a bunch of things I need to play around, but Axel's tools do a really good job of that. His long range normals can break up the web's testament sets, for instance. And in my experience, Testament plays a bit slower than other characters, which furthers my enjoyment when matched up against them. It's a weird mix of them making me have to think faster but move slower, which is made weirder still because what excited me most about facing this Testament was, and I said this out loud when the character showed up on my screen, they'll force me to move. In the end, I won the set 2-1. to one. Each match was its own kind of fulfilling so I tried to carry over that mindset of what can they teach me into my next match, which happened to be against a character that's given me fits for ages. That being Potemkin. I'd faced like five Potemkins before this and never even taken a round. But with the change in outlook, I was able to take one in this first match. The next five out of six matches I played were against different Potemkins, which was awesome because I kept getting to chip away at how I was supposed to play against him. I ended that session playing against one Potemkin in what I feel was the best match of plus R I've played so far. I think that having these improved foundations will prevent me from ever getting as low on the game as I did. Even if things are bad and I ignore my own advice about coping methods, I have faith that my improved understanding of how to approach training mode, and my having a roadmap for better structure that leads into fun combo exploration, will keep things steady. If you enjoyed this video, there are two prior diary entry videos in this series. I also recently put out a third video in my series looking at fighting games on handheld consoles. All three have so far been on Game Boy Advance games, with the most recent covering one of my favorite games from childhood. Anyways. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Peace.